When a beta update is as clean and refined as Terrors Below here, breaking it up into parts is one of my favorite things to do as a content creator. And while some people call that milking a dead cow, I prefer to think of it as making sure you out there know the how of it all. Take Shadow Rifts here, for example, and how for the time being, it seems that the Rift settings aren't exactly working. I waited out two entire Dwarf Stars down here to no avail, only to return to the surface, skip a day, and teleport straight to the Lunar Rift with no trouble and no wax tag. So you see, that's the point of these individual beta videos. Folk and Clay need the information. So then, let us get the basics out of the way so we can discuss the fun stuff. With the settings done broken, our only option is to summon and vanquish the ancient fuel weaver here, wait out yet another half-day timer before we can offer the beckoning hand five dreadstone there, watch as our ex-girlfriend shows up to the party to do her bidding, and dip out all cheeky-like, knowing full well how we take it, only to then wait out another five five days following the construction of that new ancient gateway for the Shadow Rift to spawn somewhere down here. But what happens when we can't actually stumble upon or teleport to the dang thing, you ask? Simple. Once a Shadow Rift reaches full power, the game flares up a red warning light and couples that with a character quarter two mind that will indicate that a Rift is roaring, and now we will be able to see it on our maps, even if you haven't been to that biome. And what biomes can the thing generate in? Well, apparently any mush tree biome and the muddy plains of the ruins, so at least we can rule out a few places. But as far as some other details go, Shadow Rifts in general will be around and expanding for roughly 20 days before despawning, which should be highly of note for what's to come later, but also know that it will be six days later when yet another rift opens up someplace else. This is actually a quick turnaround here for sure. And finally, rifts themselves expand every four to five days, and just like their lunar counterparts, said expansion really hurts. Got it all? Good. As we're just getting started on the specifics here, at expansion level 1, a Shadow Rift will throw out but a single fuse Shadeling with another respawning in half a day if we happen to kill it, making the act of finding a Rift early pretty darn helpful. Level 2 Rifts can have up to 3 Shadelings running around, and these guys will respawn in less than a minute now. And finally, level 3s see 5 Shadelings that, yup, you guessed it, respawn just just a wee bit quicker than that at the end of the day. But old up beard, my rifts are surrounded with these dark clouds and yours aren't. Ah uh, yes, that stuff's called miasma, and it sucks. It will drain two health every two seconds, slow us down, and even impact our vision. But we can counter it with the same counters to an oasis sandstorm, burn it all away with the torch, which is the best option, or use the void cowl to not really render the stuff powerless as you can see, but it will be the only thing to prevent that health drain, so make notes. But all up times do, Beard. Are we even gonna talk about these new nightmares? Yup, right now in fact. And the first thing you should note is that fused shade lanes aren't exactly hostile unless we ourselves get too close to a rift. This combined with their lack of horde-like mechanics makes isolating one or two of them very easy, and when we start to factor in just how easy they actually are to fight as well, it's actually kind of a strange change of pace from the bright shades. Yes, they hurt, especially their dread might explosions, so definitely avoid those whenever you can. But they hardly ever attack themselves, which is really weird. And heck, that leaping doesn't even do anything. But speaking of bright shades, it is advised to use the gear here, as shadelings do have planar defense themselves, so our normal gear won't really be as effective, I'm afraid, especially on the armor fronts. But get to a rift early, make the arena safer, pick off isolated fused shadelings, and each one will drop a whopping four pure horrors each, which go into refueling stuff twice as effectively as Nightmare Fuel, is required for both Dreadstone pieces, which also sort of sucks against the Miasma, in case you're wondering. And of course, helps not only craft the station needed to witness the new Void gear, but is needed in literally every new piece of Void gear, as you can see. Here, that boasts being weapons and tools, could put all other rain gear to shame, and have all the synergies with one another and what's to come, which is always lovely. Learn more here. But what is to come, you ask? Oh, you know, just the very sneaky stuff that can only 
only occur with the Rift Active, like Don't Start Together's newest earthquake mechanic that sees boulders crash down atop our noggins even without an antline and rage, Acid Rain and its ability to deteriorate our clothing, spoil our foods, transform mobs, and drain our hells if we're not prepared enough, and finally, call forth the discount shadow pieces from any Nightmare Fissure via the Dreadstone outcropping. Be sure to say hello to our fresh friends Jitters, Shriek, and Rasp as well, as they are the only ways to obtain Dark Tatters at the end of the day. And to really reiterate this segment, no rift equals none of this extra fun. As there you have it everyone, one last look at the Shadow Rifts of Terrors Below, and our final update video until Clay goes and updates the update potentially. But as always, I will be sure to keep you all informed that that does come to pass. But for now, thanks for sticking with me as we broke it all down over these last few days. Well, wish it to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.